Hello everyone, I'm of course John Doe, right here in Tokyo, Japan as always, and today we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to talk about something that you would typically not expect on this channel, but I think this will be very intriguing and interesting to a lot of people as it relates to Japan. Now as the title says, we're going to be talking about what it's like to have a child in a Japanese hospital. Now of course, as a Captain Obvious would say, I'm a man. So I can't tell you what it feels like to give birth to a child. Only my wife can tell you that and she's not one to go on YouTube and talk about such things. But what I can tell you is about the process. The process of having a child in Japan, in a, in a Japanese hospital, when it actually comes down for the moment of truth and it's time to have the child. It's a lot of good information that I hope to share with you. And if you find yourself in Japan in this situation, I hope this kind of can prepare you for it. And if you just want to know about what this is like to, to do in Japan, you'll find it interesting. Now the first thing and the number one important thing when you're going to have a child in a Japanese hospital is choosing your hospital. I'm telling you right now, it's just good sense to pick a hospital that's within walking distance. Now why do I say this? Why is it so critical? Well, in Japan, when the moment t comes, you need to get to the hospital as quickly and easily as possible. You do not want to be in a situation where you are getting on a train to go to your hospital you chose. And trust me, that can happen if you're not wise about it and don't choose the right hospital. Worst case scenario, you'll choose a hospital you got to take a taxi to. You know, that's the worst case scenario. The extreme worst case scenario is, like I said, getting on the train to try to go to the hospital. So it's vitally important that you position yourself near a hospital you can walk to. It was a real big advantage for me and my wife that the hospital was a 10 minute walk from our house. And when she well, water broke, we were ready and prepared and just walked down the hospital. Let's get into point two about having a child at a Japanese hospital. Be prepared. In fact, be overly prepared. Now, I never had a, a child in a Western country. So I'm going to tell you what it's like in Japan. When you show up at a Japanese hospital, anything, any extras, and I do mean any type of extra you better bring with you I'm talking like snacks um, towels clothes anything like that you need to have prepared and ready beforehand have all that stuff ready anything you think you need bring with you because a Japanese hospital will tack that on to the cost which as a side note gets into another point about cost. We paid absolute zero money for the birth. There's two reasons for that. At the time that Kayla was born, both me and my wife were on the uh, top tier of, of uh, social insurance in Japan, which means like um, we paid half and the company we was working for paid half. And the fact due to our income level, those two things factored in and everything was free. Now, a copay could have kicked in if we had not prepared our extras ahead of time. We brought extra sheets, blankets, food, snacks, water, everything we could think of that would might incur a copay. You gotta consider that. You gotta think about what type of insurance uh, tier you on and you gotta think about what your economic bracket is as it relates to your copay. 
you really got to consider that. That's something important. Now, here's a big thing that you're probably all waiting for. What's it like when you're birthing the child? Well, this is quite interesting. Now, I can't speak for everyone who's had a child in Japan. And like I said, I can't tell you what it feels like to birth a child in a Japanese hospital because I'm a man and I can't birth a child. At least I think I can't. So, when you get in there, you the doctor comes in initially just a few minutes. He checks on the woman, makes sure she's okay. He'll take some vital signs and he walks out. You don't basically see him again for a long time. Now, we had three nurses. Come, three. Three nurses who are very attentive and we're there to fully support and take care of the process during the entire time. Now, I assume you can expect that in any hospital in Japan. The nurses were absolutely amazing. Very professional and knew what they were doing. Now, if you're watching this as a man, you know, here's some things that you're going to be expected to do. Number one, you're going to be expected to be calm and in control. If you get out of control and too emotional, the nurses will speak to you about this and they will tell you you need to chill out now like for me and my demeanor I was pretty calm regardless of this they still noticed I was nervous and they point out to me don't be so nervous it's now the time for that you know I was pretty in control and still they noticed I was nervous and mentioned it so they take the, the male in the situation being calm and in control quite serious now the reason to do this is because there are certain responsibilities you have and you're expected to have at the Japanese hospital during the birth you're expected to assist in the um, contractions very actively and very supportively but they have this thing you gotta do every time there's a contraction you gotta take your hand and kinda like this weird handcuff kind of a gun type of motion and you put your thumb at the small of your of the woman's back you take the rest of your fingers and put them up like real close and when she's about to have a contraction you expect to push really hard and really intensely into her lower back now it would explain to me the reason you do that is to assist and help with two things number one the pain you're helping to relieve the pain by supporting her spine. And it makes it, makes it easier for her to, her to dilate. So those are two reasons you expect to do that. Now as the birth progresses, these contractions happen more and more often. And after the nurse has explained to you for a few times and assists you, you're expected to be able to do this on your own rather quickly. And you should. Because it really helps your, uh, your, your wife or your female partner. Now this carries on for a while and it gets to the point where, the, where she's dilated almost fully. Now once she's basically fully dilated, you're not expected to do the whole um, assisting with the lower back pain and helping dilation anymore. When it's the go time, the head nurse will come in and there are actually two assistants and they'll start to prepare for the birth. At that point, here's something you may find a bit um, off-putting. You are not permitted to film or take photos of the actual birth. Now I know in a lot of Western countries it's a big thing to film the birth. You know, to take pictures of the actual baby coming out of the woman. In Japan, you don't do this. Now I tried to understand why and it was really wasn't explained to me, but the best way I can understand it is it's kind of a showing respect for the privacy of the woman because it's a very personal experience for a woman to have a baby and also it's protecting privacy and the professionalism of the nurses it's a bit of a legal thing going on there that's what I assume but you're not allowed to do that so don't try it because you'll be ostracized very quickly and you will be denied the right to do that but what you are expected to do as a man is that you stand right behind the woman and the bed there you're right over on her head 
and you grab her hand and you're expected basically to give emotional support and just kind of be there and when the baby comes out it's you're speechless as a man you will never forget the first reaction on your baby's face when she's pulled out of the womb she or he is put out of the womb you'll never forget that and it at the end it's so gratifying because you went these the whole like nine months of dealing with all these hormonal changes with the woman and all the crazy things that happen during the pregnancy and that final moment happens a baby comes out and that first look on the baby's face and their first reaction to being alive and being birthed you'll never forget it as soon as the baby's born they put her in they put him or her my case her in a special baby uh, kind of crib they clean her off and they uh, she she go, she goes poop immediately they clean that up they put a diaper on her and they give her to the mother now here's the part you may be a bit dumbfounded by the mother and father are expected to be taking care of the child as soon as it's born they don't take her off to an infirmary somewhere and the mother sleeps no the mother starts taking care of the child within 15 minutes of the child being born so expect that do not be surprised by that you know you'll be responsible for the child the care of the child as soon as it's born that's probably the one thing that'll be hard to deal with and hard to come to terms with but that's what it's going to be so again like i said i hope you enjoyed this video i hope you learned a little, learned a little bit about what it's like to have a child in a japanese hospital and if you have anything to add, please leave some comments below, share your own experiences, or kind of if you want to compare how it goes in your own country, please tell me because I want to learn. And if you thought this video was worth sharing around, please do because maybe other people want to know about this. So until next time, it's me, John Doe in Tokyo. Check it out.